Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So it is indicating that the slope is going to be zero however it as i indicated as i have shown it does not say whether my point is going to be the maxima minima or inflection point for that reason we need to look into the sufficient condition so in the sufficient condition if we do the consecutive derivative until we reach a non zero value then we can say will reach a minimum value of the function if the nth derivative where we obtain the non zero value is first of all even and the value at the nth derivative is greater than zero on the other hand we will get the maximum value of fx if the derivative order is even and the derivative value is less than zero however if we find that the the nth derivative n is actually odd in the odd derivative we found the positive value then it becomes a point of inflection now we will look into a few example to understand this process even better so the first example we have is this function it is a single variable x is only one variable and we need to find out what is the maximum and the minimum of this function as per the necessary condition we need to look into the first order derivative so if we do the first order derivative we get f does x equal to 60 x to the power 4 minus 180 x to the power 3 plus 120 x square which is equal to 60 x square it can be represented as 60 x square x minus 1 x minus 2 and this has to be 0 for an optimum point if this is going to be 0 then we can clearly say x is equal to 0 or x is equal to 1 x equal to 2 so these are the three points where it is going to satisfy the necessary condition so we need to investigate further and if we want to investigate further we can look into the second order derivative value of those points so first let's let us investigate the x equal to zero so the second order derivative we are finding that f dash x f2 dash x equal to zero at x equal to zero which is the secondary order derivative at x equal to 0 is 0 so we cannot decide anything at this point we need to further go down the line we need to look into the third order derivative the third order derivative of the function we looked into is going to be non-zero for the value x equal to 0 now unfortunately it is the third order or the value of n is 3 as we had indicated in the sufficient condition we can obtain the minimum or the maximum only when the order of the derivative is even in this case it is non-zero at the third order and hence we cannot get a optimum value rather it represents an inflection point now let's look into the second point which is x equal to 1 the second order derivative at x equal to 1 we find a non-zero value and it is negative 60 so negative 60 is indicating that at x equal to 1 we have a relative maximum value and the f max is going to be 12 the last point which we obtained was x equal to 2 and x equal to 2 if you are looking into the second order derivative we find a non-zero value of positive 240 and this 240 is positive and hence we are getting a relative minimum point where the function value is negative 11 so let's see, look into the graphical representation of it so this blue line indicates my function this red line indicates the first order derivative so I need to find out where the first order derivative is 0 so this is one point 
this is another point and this is the third point so we can clearly see it is at x is equal to 0 x equal to 1 and x equal to 2 my slopes are 0 so that is my three values of the function where there is a potential of obtaining an optimum point or an inflection point next we are looking into the second order derivative of this function this is my second order derivative it is clear from the second order derivative that at x equal to 0 the second order derivative is also 0 however at x equal to 1 the second order derivative is not zero it has some value down the line here which is actually negative 60. the second order derivative at the second point which is again not zero but has some value up here at 240. so it is clear that the second order derivative if we are doing it it fails to give any conclusive indication for point zero but it clearly gives certain indication at the point 1 x equal to 1 and as well as at the point x equal to 2 and looking into the function we can clearly see that x equal to 1 the objective function here is relatively maximum whereas at x equal to 2 the fun objective function is relatively minimum since the second order derivative did not yield a conclusive way at x equal to 0 so we looked into the third order derivative and the third order derivative we found that the value is non-zero if we investigate our objective function we can clearly see that if we go towards the left the function value is decreasing if we go towards the right the function value is increasing so this point we cannot conclude it as the relative optimum point rather we are concluding it as an inflection point similarly we look into another function in this case we want to look into a function very simple function f x equal to x to the power 4 so if you are looking into the first order derivative we get does x equal to 4 x q now f dash x is going to be 0 if x is equal to 0 so we got the point where we need to check now we have to check at the second order derivative if you are looking into the second order derivative of this we are getting 12 x square so at x equal to 0 we obtain the second order derivative as at x equal to 0 the second order derivative is equal to 0 so again we cannot decide let's look into the third order derivative the third order derivative is 24x and at x equal to 0 the third order derivative is equal to 0 still we cannot decide we need a non-zero value let's look into the fourth order derivative which is 24 and now we are happy we don't have any zero it we have a non-zero value the fourth order derivative we are finding a non-zero value which is 24 and we can see that the derivative number it's the fourth order so which is even which is actually good for us because we can decide whether the point is minimum or the maximum in order to decide we need to investigate the value we are finding that this is positive so we are going to get the minimum and if you look into the answer in a graphical rep representation we will see that this is our function this is our first order derivative so at this point we cannot decide so we are looking into the second order derivative this 
the second order derivative as indicated is still zero we need further investigation we looked into the third order derivative which is this and which is also yielding a zero value hence we need further investigation so when we went to the fourth order derivative we are getting a value 24 not equal to zero so we are at a point where we can make a definite conclusion about that particular point first of all it is an even order of derivative that means we have an optimal point and the derivative is positive so we have a minimum value and this minimum value is equal to zero or this is how we derive the optimum value for a single variable optimization problem so today we learned about the single variable optimization in the process we came to know about the relative or local minima and maxima we also discussed about the global optimum point and the difference between the local optimum and global optimum points in the process we also discussed about the point which could be misleading and indicating the point of inflection. In the lecture, we discussed about the necessary conditions which helps to yield the potential values of design variables at which there could be a minima, maxima or point of inflection. These points are worth for further investigation to understand the nature of the objective function. The further investigation involves the sufficiency conditions which confirms whether the point is going to yield the optimum value or represents the point of inflection. We also discussed a few examples to understand the overall process. Now in this we only considered or we looked into the optimization problem with one variable. However, there are optimization problems with more than one variables. Those problems are known as multivariable optimization problems. We will discuss about the multivariable optimization problems in our next class. Thank you and see you in the next class.